double check the old feed here. Hold on one second while my Twitch goes live. We're going to hop into a relatively easy one but uh, today. Code 136, I think it is. Uh, we're going to go do a few different approaches for it. So let me just join the old channel. And good. Chat's ready. All right, let's hop into it. This one is called Single Number. It's given an array of integers. Every element appears twice except for one. Uh, find that single one. Note your algorithm should have a linear runtime complexity. Could you implement it without using extra memory? So we're going to be doing a few ways, a couple ways with extra memory and before we get to the, the final answer. So just to restate this, if I go down here, if I have in a, a list of nums, that's one, one, two, two, and three, I want to find that three. And it doesn't have to be sorted. The three could be right here. And the, the twos and the ones don't have to be there as well. Um, so when you think about a lot of different problems, just think about dictionaries, hash maps should, should pop into mind. Hey, Pulsating, thanks for stopping in today. And this is a, another example of that. So basically, you can just add these numbers um, into a dictionary. Um, every time you see it again, you can increment it. And then you can walk through that dictionary items. And you can say, all right, well, if the value of this is 1, go ahead and give me that key, uh, which will be what we're looking for. So, hey, Lavender JMK, thanks for stopping in. So let's go ahead and write that. So we'll call D as our dictionary. And for num in nums, we do the old for loop. And we'll say if num not in the dictionary, when we want to add it, so then we say D of num equals 1. Otherwise, it is in the dictionary. Then we say d of num. We want to increment that to one. Um, then we we have to walk through this again, and then we say so for key value and d dot items. So that, that let's just see the keys and the values of the items. We just say if the value is one, then we return the key, and that's all all there is to it. Uh, Standard dictionary answer. Uh, this time complexity is at n squared because we have a for loop up here and we have another for loop down here. No, it's actually linear time complexity because the for loops are uh, not nested. We do one and then we do the other. And so if we go ahead and submit this solution, while well, I take a drink of water. We should see that it's accepted. Um, yeah, so it's just a standard dictionary. That's the first approach of three that we're going to be doing. Um, now let's. Ooh, one other way you can do this. Uh, so these four lines, if num not in dictionary, then d of num. Well, one you can just put these on on the same line like that, and that'll still work. Um, another way you can you can do this is you just say uh, d of num equals getting the value for num. And if it's not there, you say it's zero and then you do plus one. And so if we submit that, that's um, I think a little bit cleaner way of, 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 um, of doing basically the exact same thing. So that's the first mes method with a dictionary. Linear time complexity, but also linear space complexity because we have uh, a dictionary um, that, that we're using there with, with uh, n space complexity. So when we think about this too, let's take, take another approach. Can we kind of math it out? Um, and if I say this, if I say the word set, does that have any meaning uh, for this? So when you think set, okay, that's interesting. A set can only have unique elements, and so this is kind of like double of a set, right? Except for one. So that should tell you, okay, there's possibly a one-liner that we can do out here. And there is. So we, if we just look at twice of the sum of the set of nums, so if we had 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, forgive my spacing on there, and we have that as, as a set, that would be a set of 1, 2, 3. 
Then we take the sum of those, so 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's 6. And then we double it, now we have 12. Well, if we're looking at the original one, that's 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3. So that's 1, 2, 4, 6, 9. So if we just du take double of the sum of the set and we just remove the sum of the original array or list in Python, that will also give us an answer, which is also linear time complexity and also space complexity. So this is just a nice little interesting thing using the, the properties of a set. So if we go ahead and say like this, sum of nums, and we go ahead and submit, we should see that... after a moment, and after another drink of water, that we get the, uh, the correct answer. Good, we're accepted. Now, let's go on to uh, the solution that they're kind of going after here when they say, could you impl implement it without using extra memory? So what we've, we've done before, yes, the, the two solutions we just did, using a dictionary and using uh, a set, they have linear runtime complexity, but we are using extra memory. So to kind of spoil it, if we go to, oops, I was just double checking that I was showing everything. Uh, if we go to bitwise operators, this will tell us what we're, what we're going to be after. Um, and if you're not familiar with bitwise operators, well, perhaps it's, beneficial first to go over or re go over because I think a lot of people have already learned about binary numbers um, but it's interesting to, to think about them. So a binary number as opposed to uh, a number that we usually use for counting, I believe decimal, um, it goes up by twos. So if we go to the big board So normally when we're thinking, okay, we have, you know, the ones place or, and then the hundreds place, excuse me, and the tens place. I told you I was on low sleep, right? The ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. So this number is 200 and zero tens and one one. Um, binary is similar. Actually, I don't have to raise anything except for binary is only zeros and ones. And instead of the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, and so on, we have go up by multiples of two. So this is the ones place, this is the twos place, and this is the fours place. So this number is one one, zero twos, and one four. So this number would be five, uh, as we conventionally know it. Um, good. And let's then. There's also some things called bitwise operators. How should I best uh, describe this? So if I have this number right here, 1, 1. So in binary, that's a 3. And this number 0, 1, same as normal, that's also just a 1. We can do uh, a few different bitwise operators on this. And in Python, um, the AND is rep represented by an ampersand. So if we have these two values, 1, 1, and we ampersand them, and O1, what does AND mean? AND means if I have both 1s in a given place, I want to keep that 1. Otherwise, in all other cases, if it's an O1, a 1, O, or a 0, 0, I want to get rid of it. So what this will become, we, we have the one in the ones place, so we're going to hang on to that. There's a one in, in this twos place for three, but there's no one in this one in this twos place for one. So that becomes a zero. So three and one, the bitwise operator, becomes one. Then we have another one, which is or. Or says if you have one one, a one o, oh, or an o oh, one, give me that one. I like that. If it's a zero zero, keep it zero zero. Um, so if we do 1, 1, it's a little confusing because this looks like a 1, 0, oh, 1. In this case, we're just going to be coming a 1, 1. This will become a 3. 
Now there's something that's a little bit more trickier to think about. It's called an exclusive OR. And in Python, that's represented by a caret, which is Shift-6 on a, on a keyboard. Now if we have that same 1-1 one, one and 0-1, oh, this says get, if you have a 1-1 one, one or a 0-0, zero, zero, I don't want those. Make those zeros. If you have an 01 or a 10, then I want that. Make that a 1. That's an exclusive OR. They have to be opposites. So 11 one, one and, o, and o 01, exclusive OR, has becomes 1 in the 1's place because it's 1 and a 0. And then the excuse me, in the 2's place. And in the 1's place, that becomes a 0. So this is this this is a 2. So that's a little um, confusing to, to think about if you haven't seen it before. But here they are again. Um, X ampersand Y is does a bitwise and. Each bit of the output is one if the corresponding bit of X and of Y is one, otherwise it's zero. The or, if the bit of X and Y is zero, otherwise it's a one. Each bit of the output is zero. Exclusive, bitwise exclusive or is each bit of the output is the same as the corresponding bit and n if that bit and n is zero and it's the complement of that bit and n if that bit is, is, is a one. So just to really hammer the point home, so this is a three represented in binary in Python and we said and o b o one, that's a one. So we said if we print these a three and a one should just be a one. So let's go ahead and run that in this REPL, and it is over here. Um, you can also show <coughs> the binary representation just by, by throwing a bin in front of it. So we do see it's, oh, it's a one. Um, if we do an OR, we should see the three again, and we do. And the SOAR, or exclusive or or soar or soar I've heard before as well um, becomes a two. So why is that? Why is that important? Well, exclusive or has an interesting property in that anything crossed with zero is just becomes the thing itself, and anything crossed with itself becomes zero. Hey, Cody Eli, thanks for stopping in. So basically, all you have to do is think about this is if we just walk through every num in, in these nums and we just do continuously do exclusive ors, all the ones that have pairs, excuse me, all the, the numbers that have pairs will cancel each other out. And if we start with the zero, what's left will be the single one. So it's kind of an interesting concept. You might have to play with around with it a little bit yourself to get um, a firmer understanding of it. but the implementation is dirt simple. So basically, we have a result and we call that a zero. And you just say for num in nums, then we just do a result. Um, see, I'm trying to do this. Yeah, I'm trying to th see if I can make this a little bit simpler, but this this will work. So, and then we we return the result. So basically, this says the result that starts is zero. We make an exclusive OR for every number there, and then we eventually return the result. So there's only one for loop here linear over the array, linear runtime complexity. There's no extra memory. So once we go ahead and submit the solution, it'll wait a minute, but hopefully we do see that, that that's the answer. And you know this is kind of a, a little bit of a gotcha. I'm faster, or faster than 97.72 percent of uh, Python submissions, so that's nice. Um, but I will say that this question is a little bit of a gotcha. Um, it's leak code 136 single number, and there's not a whole lot of cases where you're going to use bitwise operators for a lot of these al algorithms and data structures. This this is one case where yes, the optimal solution with no uh, with constant time, extra memory, and linear runtime complexity uh, is is a bitwise solution. It's the kind of one that if you see in an interview setting, um, that you probably just have to already know the answer to it. <laughs> so th in that respect, it's not not a super duper great uh, answer. At least if you're going if you're going for uh, the uh, the the optimal 
space complexity solution. Uh, using a dictionary, that's a relatively uh, common for uh, common thing. Uh, using uh, sum of sets, that's a little bit more nuanced as well. But this is an interesting problem. I thought um, a few different ways of going after the the uh, same same thing for finding a single number. Hopefully, you learned something. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be uh, here next week. And this is Programmer Mitch signing out.